creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voices, let us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. Bright burning sun with golden beams, soft silver moon that gently gleams. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Great rushing winds that are so strong, you clouds above that sail along. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia. Fair rising morn with praise rejoice, stars nightly shining find a voice. Sorry. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So happy Easter yet again. Happy We've changed most of the flowers. We're all dragging from way too much lamb and everything else for, for Easter. I was going to say Christmas. Um, <laughs> and we wonder how much more we can stretch this out. Well, probably about another four or five weeks. So good luck. And so in our gathering then, let us pray for that luck. Let us pray for God's grace and God's blessing and God's peace that we can be the bearers of Christ to the world around us and that we can transform the world into God's kingdom with Jesus' guidance. You are the tender mercy of God Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the good shepherd who calls us by name. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are the gatekeeper, the one who calls us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, oh God, my almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. amen. Let us be seated to listen carefully to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. 
the word of the Lord. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. The stones which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like God, for we shall see God as God is. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. We read this day from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired, a hired shepherd who is not the leader and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming, and he leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. The command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I won't even try to ask if anybody knows anything about sheep because there's probably somebody here who does. As a, as a as a kid and then as a, as a baby priest, I worked in, in Queens. I know rats, I know pigeons. <laughs> I don't know anything about sheep. And Jesus is going on and on for the next couple of weeks about shepherd this and sheep that. I'm like, what is he talking about? 
But the folks who heard Jesus and the folks who saw Jesus, they understood. And they actually got that Jesus is flipping things on, the, on their backside today. He's turning the sheep over, if you will. The shepherd didn't lay down across the gate. If he did, they thought he was drunk. The shepherd didn't do that. The shepherd just kind of walks along, and the sheep come along with him. And often enough, the sheep are ahead of him. And it's usually a him. These days, maybe it's a little more diverse, but back then, it was always a him. It was always like a 12 or a 13 year old boy who had nobody else. Because if the wolf came, or if the robbers came, nobody would miss him. So he was a hired man. He's not the shepherd. He's the one who has to take the sheep from place to place and eventually to have them shorn and take them to the temple for sacrifice. But is that all? The shepherd is the world, the entire universe for that particular flock of sheep. They know his voice. He knows theirs. He can understand them to a certain extent. But he calls their name, and they come. And I never believed this until I was living in Italy the last couple of years. And this is outside of Rome on the, where, the, um, where the catacombs are on the Appian Way. There's these giant fields. And at this time of year, they move the sheep from field to field. And sure enough, he make, the shepherd would make these noises, and the sheep come running. He'd make a different noise, and two or three over here would do it the little ones and the big ones. And they all went with him. But he was in the back. And his stick was mostly just to kind of pull them in so they didn't run down the hill faster than the rest of them. No one takes anything from him. No one takes anything from him because this is all we got. This particular bunch of sheep, this particular bunch of Catholics, this particular place, we who are called by Christ, the shepherd lays his life down for us because he makes a noise. He calls us by name. He makes a noise that touches our hearts. Something in the scripture, something in the life of Christ calls out to us and invites us to be different. That's why St. John is writing, they didn't know him because he was different. They thought he was a little nuts. Even sometimes the apostles did. They didn't understand what Jesus was all about. Sometimes the sheep don't understand either. It's a work in progress. Our life as Christians, our life as disciples is a work in progress. And that's the hardest thing probably to accept and to learn. We can say it, but to really allow ourselves especially as Americans, to slow down and not be in charge. It's hard. <clears throat> it's hard. Because we want to get everything done. We want to be very efficient. We want to take care of things. That's not what the shepherd does. He just stands there. He is just present. And the sheep know that they are protected. They know that they're cared for. And he knows that these are mine. He knows exactly every one of them. Whether he's a shepherd boy or he's an old, grumpy old guy like me, doesn't matter. They know they belong to each other. The celebration today, the Feast of the Good Shepherd, is an invitation for us all to remember that we are called in baptism. What we celebrated in the darkness of the Easter Vigil, when we blessed ourselves with the holy water, when we were reminded of our baptismal commitment. That's something that we just said, and we said, thank you very much. But it's a way we choose to live, and to be, and to act. It's not easy. And the world really doesn't want to hear from us. How often is the Pope called a communist, or a socialist, or crazy? Because he points out that we as Christians need to be a thorn in the side of everybody else. Not to poke our finger in their eyes, but to care for what God has given us. 
And it takes all of us to do that. It takes all of us to care for the work of creation, to be the shepherd. And Jesus is the one who teaches us. And all of those who have taught us the way of faith, the way of life, they've shown us the path that we should walk. We are God's children now. What we'll be, we don't understand. We will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye and it will, <clears throat> and it will all be revealed. God's blessing and God's grace is what makes that happen. When we accept that, when we live by that. We could be like Peter. We could be stubborn. We could choose not to listen. We could choose to be the one who wants to be in charge all the time. Or we could be like the beloved disciple, the one who listened first to what Jesus was saying, who listened for the call and responded. Two very good ways of being Christians. Two very good ways of being sheep, sheep and followers of Christ. Not docile animals, but friends and those who belong to Jesus because he is our world. He is our life. He is our hope. They crucified him and they hung him on a tree, but God raised him up. And we share in that. St. Paul says it over and over and over in the letters and all he wrote. We are baptized into Christ. And so we have chosen to live like Jesus. And we have to say that commitment every day. Help me today to hear the call. The scriptures invite us. All of our teachers of the faith invite us. God is inviting us in the people that are around us, in each other, that we do belong to each other. And Jesus is at the doors and he's saying, come, welcome, invite others and make this the special place of God's life. If the incarnation, the birth of Christ was first revealed to shepherd boys, and Jesus today is speaking about himself as a shepherd boy. And elsewhere in the gospels, Jesus is with the shepherds. It's something we should probably pay attention to. Doesn't matter. We have to let go of everything else. We have to be the least so that we could be the first. We have to be the least that nobody wants to see. We have to care for all of those that nobody else wants. And we have to do it all because Jesus did. Jesus washed their feet. We washed their feet. Jesus talked and listened as he went on the way. We talk and listen as we go on the way. The people of Israel should know. And it is the name of Jesus that we follow. He stand, that man stands healed because of the name of Christ. It says here in the Acts of the Apostles. We are healed too because someone spoke the name Jesus to us and said, follow him. And over and over again, that shepherd says to us, follow me. May we have the grace to get up and go. And so as, sorry.
this microphone's a little more sensitive to that one. And so then as the friends of Jesus, as those disciples who have said yes today, let us tell the world of all that we believe and know to be true. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us intercede for the needs of all God's children in the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. That all those for whom Jesus laid down his life, for those outside the fold, that all may be gathered into the one flock of the one shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For world leaders, that those who control the destinies of nations may respect all life and act as responsible stewards of the power and the people entrusted to their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For society's defenseless ones, that they may be known and defended by Christians as God's own people, worthy of dignity and respect, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those newly baptized and those received into the church may rejoice in the salvation that is theirs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are facing new beginnings and transitions in their lives, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, for Elizabeth O'Brien and Pam Stockamore, for two infants, Skylar and Finley, for Mary Ann, for those suffering from COVID, those in chronic pain, those undergoing surgery or recovering from surgery. May they find health in the name of Jesus and care at the hands of his disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for Barbara Terry and for Annunciata de Souza, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may see God face to face and be radiant with joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we carry in our hearts, let's pause for a moment in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of lasting love, fulfill your plan of salvation to gather into one fold the peoples of the whole world. Let everyone on earth recognize your Christ as the good shepherd who freely lays down his life for all to take it up again in power. Grant this through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And how blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. From your goodness we have bread to offer. It is a gift of the earth and the work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. And how blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. 
in your goodness, you give us wine to offer. It is the fruit of the vine, the fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands. And it will become for us our spiritual drink. So we pray that these simple gifts, the very simple gift of our life, be acceptable offerings to God, our Almighty Father. <clears throat> and the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Amen. We pray, O Lord, that you grant that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of unending joy through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. Truly, it is right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, God of infinite goodness. For by the word of your son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled this church with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease through it to gather the whole human race as one family. Manifesting the covenant of your love, the church dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus, our Lord, you promised would last for all ages. And so, with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, in one voice, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, for you love the human race and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your son present in our midst when we are gathered by his great love. And when is once for his disciples, so today for us. It is Jesus who opens the scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, God, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, that night of his last supper, Jesus took the bread and he said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and he gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, loving God, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son and our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated forever at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until Jesus comes in glory. 
offering to you the bread of life and the chalice of eternal blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed down to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world that it be enlightened by the word of the gospel. Strengthen the bonds of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all of our bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the, all the dead whose faith only you have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and on the day of resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is complete that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever So we stand then around the table that Jesus prepares for us. And with the confidence of all the disciples, let us pray the prayer that Jesus left for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from all that is evil. Graciously grant peace in our lives, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from those things that worry us. As we await the blessed hope and the coming in glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, look on our faithfulness and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen one be with you always. And, with your spirit. and as one holy people, let us share that and pray for each other. On your stay, qui tollis peccata muni, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata muni, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, cui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. This is Jesus. This is God's love and mercy and hope in us. Happy are we called and gathered at his table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. For the reception of communion, just remain where you are. We'll bring communion to you. If you would rather not receive, just cross your arms over your chest and we'll pray a prayer of blessing instead. child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God sent the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. Shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the the race we shall know the joy of Jesus in him there is no darkness at all the night and the day are both alike the lamb is the light city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. God's holy gifts for 
So a few announcements before we go. I'm working on a new poem. It goes like this. Though April showers may come your way, when we're at the grotto, we'll have sunny days. Still needs a little work. It's vaguely reminiscent of something I heard once. Um, might not be too original. Anyway, next Sunday, well, next Saturday, actually, we will begin our masses outside at the grotto. So pray for good weather. Um, so once we're outside at the grotto, you will not have to reserve places for mass. We have enough space that whoever comes, there'll be space, okay? We're going to ask you, uh, we're following the current uh, state regulations, and so we're going to ask you to continue to wear a mask and to maintain social distancing, so six feet from the people who are not in your family, not in your, your group. We'll space the uh, benches so that they're six feet apart. Um, when you're seated at your bench because we're outside and you're six feet away from everybody, you can take your mask off but we're gonna ask you to put it back on when you come up for communion and also when you, when you get up from your bench to leave, okay? So those will be the outdoor rules. Um, we, so beginning on Saturday, we'll have mass at 11.30 on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, okay? Always at 11.30. Before we get there on Saturday, this coming week, we will have Mass at 10.30 on Tuesday, as we have been. We'll also have Mass on Wednesday at 10.30 because it's the Feast of St. Louis de Montfort. It's the Feast of the founder of our congregation. So we'll have a Mass in here um, on Wednesday and then also on Thursday, as usual, at 10.30. Beginning Saturday, which is the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, we'll be outside at the Grotto so Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and we're going to have glorious weather for the whole month of May. Okay. You're going to leave us with that? <laughs> okay, you heard it. It's on him if the weather snows and stuff, okay? I couldn't believe it snowed this week. <laughs> Well, with that, let us stand and pray. Look upon your flock, Lord, Lord Jesus, our gentle shepherd. Be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your life, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And let us open our hearts our lives, and our hope, and pray for God's blessing. Through the resurrection of Jesus, God has redeemed us and made us his children. May God bless us with joy every day. Amen. Amen. Our Redeemer has given us lasting freedom. May we inherit everlasting life. Amen. Amen. By faith, we rose with Jesus on the day of our baptism. May our lives every day be holy, so that we will be united with Jesus forever. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit Amen. descend upon us and remain with us every day of our lives. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a great week. Alleluia, 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 Resuscito. And death now vanished is our fear now. Tears now, death has passed away. Re
resucitó, 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 aleluya. Hallelujah.